Patreon is a membership platform that makes it really easy for creators to get paid. Idea Channel will soon be launching a Patreon. I started a, a Patreon. I started a Patreon. My Patreon page. Patreon is the lifeblood of our business. Welcome to Psych IRL. My name is Donna. As of late, my videos have been getting demonetized. So, I'm starting a Patreon. Just kidding, don't worry, your wallets are safe. I am not starting a Patreon. But it does seem like everyone's starting one nowadays. For the most part, every single fan and viewer is happy to support their favorite creators. And everyone is welcome to open a Patreon, but also everyone is not welcome to open a Patreon. Let's talk about that. That's why I have Patreon. And people get like, kind of. sometimes my fans get kind of weird about it. like. You know, we want to see your stuff too, this isn't fair. I am personally subscribed to almost 300 channels on YouTube. And if each one of those channels decided to open up a Patreon, my wallet would be empty. Even if every channel just asked for $1 per month, that's $300 per month out the window. I love everyone I'm subscribed to, but I don't love them that much. I think a lot of people feel the same way. So certain types of creators are met with anger and frustration when they do some sort of fan funding. So it turns into this weird thing. Technically, everyone is allowed to have fan funding. There's no law against it, but the internet allows and doesn't allow some people to have it. So who does the internet allow to have fan funding and who does it not? For the most part, viewers are understanding of how much time goes into a video of a particular genre. Animation, video essays, and other educational content that are impossible to produce daily have happy patrons supporting them. So production value, research, and overall effort in making a video are heavy influences into whether or not a viewer will support your content. For example, daily vloggers really aren't welcome in opening a Patreon. Listen, Linda, your videos are cool, but um, I'm not paying for your vacation to Bali. So it's really interesting seeing a creator like Matt Diavela be supported on Patreon. So he's technically not a vlogger, but he does have vlogger type videos. So my morning routine for the past couple of years has been crazy simple. You could call it minimalist. But the first thing I always do in the morning is come right into my master bathroom and I pop on my contacts. But because his videos are high production value, the autofocus also comes in handy for YouTube videos where I'm filming myself. There's a lot of research that goes into them. There's a common myth out there that the term Black Friday is used to describe the time when companies go from being- Overall, it's just meaningful content he has happy patrons supporting him. Demonetization is also dangerous if it takes you a while to produce a video. Say you only can come up with two videos per month, and if both those videos are demonetized, that threatens your livelihood a lot. It's wise to diversify where your income comes from. As you guys know, last year on December 12th, Super Mario Logan lost most of its ads, and I got age restricted. Like a lot of my videos were age restricted. And you know, uh, we were freaking out. We didn't know what was going on because I had been on YouTube for 10 years at the time. And you know, YouTube has been my job and basically my, my whole life has been YouTube. And uh, YouTube actually pays a good amount of money. Uh, if you know this, all these big YouTubers, they make a good amount of money. So you know, my YouTube channel at the time was uh, well over a couple million subscribers and we were making a decent amount of money off our videos. And I, I had people working for me, Pablo, and he's the voice of Brungai, and Lavelle, who's the voice of Chef Heap. And everyone's under contracts and everyone's making good money at the time. And life's good, we don't see anything wrong happening. And then out of nowhere, on December 12th, YouTube age restricts me and basically takes our ads away. So at the time, obviously I panicked because I, I've never expected my job to turn on me and things, my life just to stop. And that brings us into our second criterion of who viewers support. Viewers hate the fact that some creators have to censor themselves in order to appease the algorithm. But if we abide by every single YouTube rule, you know what's gonna happen? We're gonna have to turn into a children's channel. Do you want that? Do you want, I don't want that. As a result, things like news, drama, and controversial topics can't really be talked about if they contain sensitive material. And overall, demonetization is just confusing. With the exception of two videos, I've been demonetized every single time. And I was able to appeal some of those demonetized videos, but by the time they were already approved, the trend was already over, and the videos just, uh, 
didn't get that much traction as if only I could have released them earlier. So a perfect example of a person who people are happy to support is Philip DeFranco. This is a new show. In 2012, Philip DeFranco's channel was owned by Discovery Digital or Group 9. This meant that despite the view count, DeFranco would still be paid since his channel was partially run by a network who owned other channels. In 2017, DeFranco announced he was buying back the rights to his channel, thereby going independent. I want to make the next great news network. A network that's run under my vision of it is okay to have and share opinions, but let's get the facts right first. Let's express what both sides are actually saying, give their points of view. Independence means how you're paid is now reliant on view count because you can no longer use a company for financial cushion. This doesn't include things like sponsorships or merch, by the way. Because controversial topics such as news is often demonetized on YouTube, Franco opened a Patreon so fans could support him in case of demonetization. Here's the thing, every one of us has different schemas for different things, and a schema is a cognitive structure that serves as a framework for different things. So just think about it like a framework. For instance, the framework of a bird may be feathers, flies, lays eggs, etc. So anytime we see any animal with these characteristics, we can quickly categorize them as a bird. Of course, we have this for people. The independent creator, for instance. The independent creator is real not fake, a real person. And of course, the independent creator is relatable. We see ourselves sometimes within these creators on YouTube. They are against mainstream media. They say the things that mainstream media is too afraid to say. It's like the little guy against a giant corporation. Now this type of creator are people we are happy to support. Now watch slowly as Philip DeFranco's schema is being transformed from independent creator to rich influencer. The minimum pledge on this Patreon is a $5 tier. Now that means minimum DeFranco is making 68,000 plus dollars, but that is super, super low. It's been estimated that he's been making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month just from his Patreon. Behind the scenes, reliable sources have told me his net worth is approximately $20 million. However, there's no proof of this. So I looked online and some articles say he's worth around 8 million US dollars. Either way, this man is a millionaire and he, my friends, is not vulnerable. Philly D is also one of the co-founders of Maker Studios that was bought by Disney for $500 million. Rich influencer is no longer relatable. First of all, rich. I don't know what that's like. He's also not just rich, but according to this, he is also manipulative. He is no longer relatable. He is manipulating the set in order to be relatable. You gotta love the unfinished construction site in the background. You know, every ladder and every little piece has been placed there so strategically and so carefully. So when the audience is watching, they go, whoa, look at all that construction work Phil's doing. He must need my money. And these are the type of characteristics people don't want to support. People don't want to support the rich YouTuber. Though these points didn't take traction at first, eventually when DeFranco had some controversial topics contrast to his audience, they eventually did. Why he hid the amount he was receiving from loyal viewers was questioned. Where the money was going was also in question. Eventually, everything was hidden from the Patreon after DeFranco had a few unpopular opinions contrast with his audience. Emma Chamberlain is also someone who has a rich vlogger schema that the audience doesn't seem like they want to support because of this schema. Emma Chamberlain is another creator who receives backlash from fan funding. Despite not having a Patreon, Emma Chamberlain has a membership option that allows her viewers to pay $4.99 per month for extra features. The features include custom emojis, badges, and one extra video per month. Fans claim she rarely uploads videos, so she she shouldn't be charging for this and that she shouldn't be doing this anyway because she already makes money. Most seem like they just don't want to pay for this. Well, I, I think that a lot of my audience understands business. Like we, we, we go kind of, our demo is very much like people that are entrepreneurs and trying to, to move forward, whether they're in the infancy of that or they are. Um, there are enough people that do not understand everything that goes into building a business, not just operating, but growing. Mm -hmm that I think it would be too damaging. People not taking into to account that all that money is obviously taxable. All of that money, uh, I have to pay salaries. On top of that, benefits. I have to not only have insurance on all our gear, but if I, I have... <laughs> 
I have a plan in case someone doesn't like something I said about them and they're gonna try and sue me into silence. Then there's rent, utilities. There's probably stuff that I'm not even thinking of right now. Um, and the only thing that I would, I feel then comfortable in sharing, and, and <laughs> I think it's the reason why it's, it's so frustrating to me, is like I'm paying myself less money than I made last year. I'm paying myself seven figures less than what I could have signed a deal for if I just wanted to make money. All right, so I know this is a different video from usual, less theorized concepts, but I am interested in what you think about a lot of people starting a Patreon. To me, I feel like anyone can start one. Obviously, I'm subscribed to 300 people, so I'm very picky in who I choose to support. Do I have one? No. Will I ever get one? Maybe. But yeah, I'm generally interested on who you support and why, and do you think some people shouldn't be even starting a Patreon? That's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.